In this video, we are going to discuss the topic Laplace transform. As you have studied the Fourier transform of continuous time signal, the Fourier transform of discrete time signal. If I will ask you a question that what is the advantage of Fourier transform? So one of the advantage of Fourier transform is that if you solve the convolution problem in time domain, it is very complicated to solve that problem. But you if but if you convert that into frequency domain and then apply the convolution property and then you will solve the problem, it becomes very easy to solve that problem. This is one of the advantage of converting one domain into another domain, right? Now, the uh, Fourier transform has the restrictions. What are that restrictions? That Fourier transform does not exist for signals that are not absolutely integrable. Right, this is one of the Dirichlet conditions of the Fourier transform. If the if any of the condition is not satisfied, it means you cannot write the Fourier transform for any particular signal. But this restriction has been solved in Laplace transform. Here we have taken the generalized value of S. S is what? S is a complex number and it is equals to sigma plus j omega where sigma is the real part and j omega is the imaginary part. The Fourier transform was restricted to imaginary axis only but this Laplace transform is not restricted to imaginary axis. So the Laplace transform can be identified for any type of signal whether it is stable system, stable signal or it is a unstable signal. Right. So we can calculate the Laplace transform for any type of signal. Here is the expression for the Laplace transform. Xs is equals to xt e to the power minus dt st dt, right? This is the expression for Laplace transform. Now, what is the relationship between the Laplace transform and Fourier transform? As the Fourier transform is restricted to imaginary axis, and this S can be related to imaginary axis by the expression that S is equals to sigma plus j omega, right? So if you will write S is equals to sigma plus j omega in this expression, here we have written this, the expression becomes this. Now you can visualize this expression as it is the Fourier transform of xt e to the power minus sigma t, right? xt e to the power minus sigma t. It is the Fourier transform of this function. But if you have to say in terms of Laplace transform, then you will say it is a Laplace transform of xt function only because the sigma e to the power sigma comes into this. But in case of Fourier transform, the sigma part is 0. So, the relation between the Laplace transform and Fourier transform is that the Fourier transform of any signal is multiplied with e to the power minus sigma t then it becomes the Laplace transform of that particular function. Okay. Now come to the example that is xt is equals to e to the power minus a t u t. For this given signal you have to calculate the Fourier transform or the Laplace transform. So before proceeding further, we must know the S plane because I am uh, saying that S is a complex number and it is equals to sigma plus j omega. Sigma is the real part and j omega is the imaginary part. So, so there comes a S plane. S plane uh, is here. On the x axis, we define the real part and on the y axis, we define the imaginary part, right? So this will be used to describe the values of S further. So here we have calculated the Fourier transform of e to the power minus a t u t and it is 1 upon a plus j omega. See here this integration is solvable if this a is greater than 0. If this a is less than 0 then it, this integration part cannot be solved, right? If it is, it cannot be solved means the Fourier transform for the function cannot be written. Okay. Now for the same function, you have to calculate the Laplace transform. How you will calculate the Laplace transform? 
write this function in the formula in this formula xt xt is e to the power minus at ut here we have written this e to the minus at ut to the power minus st dt right so it becomes e to the power minus s plus at okay and this s is equals to sigma plus j omega here we have written this sigma plus j omega j omega is taken here and sigma plus at dt right now solve this integration part when you solve this integ integration part you will find that when sigma plus a is greater than 0 then this integration is solvable otherwise you cannot solve this integration part so for this value sigma plus a greater than 0 you can write this integration as 1 upon sigma plus a plus j omega now see what is this sigma sigma is the real part of this s so it can be written as real part of s when we take this a this side it becomes negative so we can write this as real part of s is greater than minus a and this sigma plus j omega is replaced by s so this is the laplace transform of e to the power minus a t u t right now if you have to represent this limit in s plane how you will represent it it is real part of s is greater than minus a real part comes on this x axis so you will define a point minus a here and this integration is solvable when real part of s is greater than minus a greater than minus a part will be this okay this is also called as the roc roc is defined as those values of s for which the laplace transform is solvable or this integration is solvable if you solve this integration for those values of s then these values are called as the roc reason of convergence here we have also defined the reason of convergence in this region of convergence is referred to as the range of values of s for which the integra integrable sorry integral integral is this this is the integral this integral is converges converges means it is solvable okay so this is the roc so this figure shows the roc for the given function e to the power minus at ut okay now come to the next problem this problem is xt is equals to e to the minus at u of minus t in the similar way you can find the laplace transform and for this the reason of convergence will be real part of s is less than minus a on the s plane you can show here real part of s is less than minus a means this part this is the less than part okay so this is the reason of convergence for the given problem now come to the next problem in this problem you have to calculate the laplace transform for the given function xt is equals to 3 e to the power minus 2t ut minus 2 e to the minus t ut okay now you can compare this function with this function e to the minus a t ut e to the minus a t ut has a laplace transform 1 upon s plus a real part of s is greater than a apply this here e to the minus 2t ut compare it with that a value a is equals to 2 so its laplace transform will be 3 upon s plus 2 similarly you can write the laplace transform of this function 2 upon s plus a and you can also write the reason of convergence real region of convergence for this will be real part of s is greater than minus 2 when compared with this laplace transform okay Similarly, the reason of convergence for this part will be real part of is greater than minus a. On S plane, if you will draw the reason of convergence, you see real part of S is greater than minus a. The reason of convergence part will be the right half plane with respect to this value. Similarly, for this the reason of convergence will be the right half plane with respect to this value so these two functions are in combined form then you have to see which part is coming to the right of the rightmost so this 
part is coming to the right of the rightmost. So in combined, T reason of convergence will be real part of S is greater than minus 1 for the whole function. And this is the Laplace transform for the given function. Similarly, you can calculate the Laplace transform for this expression and also calculate the reason of convergence. Thank you.